Let's have a look at three golden rules for pin bar trading. Hey traders, warm well, welcome to you. Thank you very much for joining me and for your support, like, shares, comments, subscriptions, etc. It is much appreciated. All right, so pin bars super popular, especially for forex traders, because of the 24 hour nature of the market. We do get pin bars, of course, in the indices and in stocks. It goes without saying, but because the market's trading longer, very often we see these kind of stretched markets that reverse, perhaps in the London session or the Asia session or whatever it is, and one session kind of stands out, and that's when we get a pin bar. So just for clarification purposes, guys, a pin bar is really a long, a uh, tail if you're using a candlestick or if you're using a bar, it kind of represents a, a pin. I mean, some people call these things different things. Some people call these, uh, you know, you have to have two together to have tweezers, but I'm just going to define it as something where this is a daily chart. That's one day. Okay, so one day here. Um, I don't think there was effective necessarily in shorter time frames, but that's a different model completely. Let's talk about the daily uh, chart for now, the one day chart. That's when you get an open at a high or close near the high. And basically the intraday trade does a lot of movement in an extreme. So in the case of a down move, it moves to the downside, but then comes back up and closes. So for the intraday chart, it would kind of look like this, right? So there's your intraday chart. There would be open, there would be a close somewhere like that. In other words, it never closes or opens in the low territory. And similarly, that's the high side as well. You can have a high thing. So uh, kind of look like this on a candle or maybe the way around like this on a candle. So you get the idea. The idea hasn't closed this. So that's a, that's a, a pin bar definition. So what are the three golden rules for trading a pin bar? So like everything, guys, they, they, it's an effective, you know, it is an effective uh, kind of pattern. You know, if you think about what's happening, you're getting the supply demand changing intraday. I wanted to go into the details of that, but that's really kind of telling you something. So they are, and they can be powerful on their own, but for the added, added boost, if you like, to give that bit of nitrous oxide and give it a little bit of uh, kick in the back, you're better off having some of these rules ticked off, or all three of them at least, I think. The first thing is you must be at support or resistance. So if you were to look at these charts here, you've got this kind of pin bar uh, here, that's just in the middle of no man's land. But then if you look at this one here, this is going below, let's say that's a decent level of support, prior days low, uh, multi-week low, whatever it may be, there's a difference there. You know, that's much more powerful. When you get a rejection of a level that everyone has been looking at, that's when it, to me, it seems like it's better to stand up and pay attention. Yes, that's still got some power to it because you've taken out three day low and back up and there's still maybe a tradable opportunity in that, I'm not saying there isn't. However, if you want to kind of keep things as powerful as possible, then having it taking out a key level and rejecting is far more efficient because you're looking under the bonnet, so to speak, kind of seeing what's happening and seeing who's in charge of, of, of that move. Uh, number two, guys, the second bar must show follow through. So uh, again, flexibility needed with this, but generally the very best trades that come off this pin bar type trade are when you get a second day of follow through. So a confirmation of what's going on. So for example, let's say you saw the pin bar and you went long at the open the next day. You would want to see that pretty quickly drive off the open and hold those gains, not give them up. Maybe a little bit of a trace. I'm not saying it's going straight up in a straight line, nothing does, but just some kind of show of strength and a follow through of that. If you start kind of drifting, uh, excuse the black here, if you started to drift down, kind of doing this, uh, you, you just don't want it. Uh, yes, maybe give it a little bit of room and it might just have one day of consolidation. I'm not saying that doesn't mean you shouldn't take it, but we're sticking with the three golden rules here to give it the most power. And that's definitely after you've seen the pin bar, you know, the good second day of follow through, taking out the high, holding above the high, taking out prior highs, that kind of thing. The third thing is stops should always be under or over the pin bar. So in other words, you know, we're having a stop here, we're having a stop here. Now, listen, you can adjust it at some point. I don't, I'm not against kind of people uh, waiting maybe for the second day and then dragging it up. But really, if you think about the thesis behind the pin bar, the thesis behind the pin bar is, hey, we are rejecting a key level here. We're rejecting that price. The auction process has occurred and the buyers have come out on top and believe a higher price is a fair value for this asset. That's what's ultimately gone on. So for that to be the case and for us to take a trade on that, let's say in this example, our thesis is that 
price is no longer going to go down and revisit that low. And so it makes perfect sense for us to put an initial stop there. In other words, it doesn't have to be any wider. You know, that's our good place to do it. Now, if you want to narrow it up, then fine, but be very careful and say, listen, it's still valid even if you do a little bit of business into that into that range, as long as you show sh some strength. In a perfect world, yes, we want day two to just be, you know, blasting off the upside. Perfect, lovely, that's a textbook type trade. If it's nudging in a little bit, then we may be still gonna take it, especially if we're taking for a swing trade, uh, maybe there's a catalyst on it as well, et cetera, et cetera, fine. But, you know, really that's a good way to frame the trade. We can start off with that and we can see where it goes. And if we don't like the way it's trading, nothing to say we can't take off some of the position, not to say we can't close the position and still structure a trade in our mind, saying, okay, well, if we break the high here, then I'll take it and I'll use a stop here. So it still keeps the thing alive, but you know, we can protect ourselves a little bit. So three things, guys, pin bar must be at support resistance for the ultimate power. Uh, maybe through a range or something like that. Second bar must show follow through again, ultimate power. So if we're long on that second day, on that immediate strength and stops always under or over the pin bar. Because the thesis of the trade is that this has been an intraday reversal in the supply demand imbalance. And so if that's the case, we wouldn't want it to go back and touch that level. Good for trading, uh, Forex especially these guys. Take care, see you next one, bye-bye.